converted left side. Valencia charges, and the Twins win the opener 4 to 1. A masterful outing by Carl Pavano. And the only thing better than beating the White Sox once in a two game series is to sweep them, and that's what the Twins will hope to do this afternoon. Picked up a game on the first place uh, Detroit Cleveland combo. They're nine games back and having a very good homestand so far. And it's a good afternoon for baseball here at Target Field, along with the Hall of Famer Burp Lilov, and I'm the other guy, Dick Bramer, and the Twins hoping to sweep the Chicago White Sox in a two-game series. And it's maybe just symbolic, but Siyoshi Nishioka making his Target Field debut, something they'd hoped would happen in early April. Well, the other guy, Nishioka, good to have him back. He's going to start short. He's going to play his first game here at Target Field. Quinn saw a little bit of him, you know, in spring training, and then he broke his foot. But this guy, switch hitter, both sides of the plate, don't expect a lot of power. This guy's job is to drive in some runs, but mainly get on base and score a lot of runs. And we say symbolic because the Twins hope that with Nishioka returning to the lineup, soon to follow will be Joe Maurer and some others. Well, the Twins uh, have gotten this nice uh, spurt going here because the starting pitching's been very good. And Nick Blackburn had a great May, and he's backed it up with a decent June. Yeah, really started back on May 4th for Nick Blackburn in Chicago. He pitched six and two-thirds innings, gave it only one run. What I've noticed about Blackburn doing a great job of working both sides of the plate. And over the eight starts, you see the great ERA doing a good job of getting ground ball outs and keeping the ball down in that strike zone. Well, the Twins getting Nishioka back in the lineup today. They hope by the end of the month they'll have a complete roster the, comparable to the, what they had on opening day. We'll get an update on the health front when we come back. Beautiful day for baseball at Target Field. Twins going for the two-game sweep of the Chicago White Sox here on Fox Sports North. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Robbie Ansmikowski. Yesterday, we reduced the Twins injury report by one with Suyoshi Nishioka returning to the lineup. He starts today. But it's getting better, and the news gets is probably going to get better tomorrow. And in our Sanford Health injury update, manager Ron Gardenhire discusses the Twins injury situation. You know, Nishi back in the lineup. We're getting JoJo back uh, tomorrow and Perk back in there for tomorrow. So that's uh, three pretty good players. And, 
uh, you hope that you're kind of working towards that, having the people that you started out of spring training with being there along with a few people that have done a pretty good job up here right now. So we'll see. Should be able to subtract two more names tomorrow from the injury report. Nick Blackburn takes them out for the Twins. They go for the sweep next on Fox Sports North. Yoshi Nishioka taking the field at Target Field for the first time. Had to jump over some photographers to get there. Maybe that's the first test in his recovery from the broken leg. You know what? There's a lot of media covering Nishioka, and he has a fun time with them. He kind of teases them, and uh, there he is at shortstop, his first game here at Target Field. And the White Sox have scored three runs against the Twins in the three losses to them. Ozzie Gian's lineup. For today's game, the same as last night's game. Maybe they'll get into four more ground ball double plays. Juan Pierre leading off. Alexei Ramirez, Carlos Quentin, Paul Canerco, A.J. Pierzynski, Alex Rios, Adam Dunn, Gordon Beckham, and Brent Morrell in the Menards batting. Order. Well, maybe it'll happen again because Nick Blackburn relies on that good sinking fastball, gets a lot of ground ball outs for Blackburn. His 14th start is second against the White Sox this year. He followed Liriano's no hitter with a very good performance, a 3 to 2 win over the White Sox. And since May 4th, we showed you in the open 4 0, 2.62 ERA, and 7 game winner against the White Sox. That's the most wins against any opponent for Nick Blackburn. Juan Pierre, 1 for 10 against Blackburn, and he'll lead things off for the White Sox. First pitch strike on the outside corner. Pierre squaring the butt, bringing in Valencia and Hughes. 
We had a very rapidly played game last night, a little over two hours. Chopper to second. And Casilla, quick flip over to Hughes and a quick first down. Northland Ford defense for the Twins. Jason Repko getting the start in left. Ben Revere in center. Michael Kadair in right. Good to see Siyoshi Nishioka in the lineup, although he's at short, not at second base where he was the first week of the season. And behind the plate, Rene Rivera. Nishioka, who broke his leg trying to turn a double play in New York as a second baseman, now will get his first chance here. A one hopper off the bat of Ramirez. Two down. That's a routine play, and what we'll all be watching, I suppose, is Nishioka's arm strength. You typically need a stronger arm at short than you need at second base. Yeah, I mean, this ball hit right sharply right at him. Ramirez hitting it sharply, and Nishioka playing the nice hop and a little throw hop over to first base. And when I mean throw hop, take a couple steps, get yourself set as he does right there, and you throw off that back right leg. So two quick outs, just three pitches thrown, and here's Carlos Quentin. Last night, Pavano in that first inning set the tone, throwing what seven, eight pitches, eight, eight pitches, in all a one, two, three, first inning, and it really did set the tone for what was to follow. Well, one thing about the White Sox, they come out swinging at bat. Pavano, that nine inning complete game victory, threw only 96 pitches. And the pitching staff has been outstanding. First 46 games, Twins had one complete game. Foul back one and two. And over the last 20 ball games, they have had four complete games. One by Nick Blackburn. One and two to Carlos Quentin. Left up high, two and two. Blackburn making his 14 start, his 106th major league start, seven and five in his career over the White Sox in 14 previous starts. Bouncer to short, Nishioka to his left. Sets and fires. Three ground ball outs and a quick one, two, three inning for Nick Blackburn. Target field plate appearance here in this first inning. The Menard batting order for the Twins has Ben Revere on top, Alexi Casillas, Siyoshi Nishioka, Kadair Young and Hughes in the middle, Valencia Rivera and Repco, the bottom third. And Revere's in the batter's box ready to go against Mark Burley. If we thought the pace of last night's game was pretty quick, it might be quicker today. Yeah, be ready to swing, and it's going to be quick. Mark Burley, 14 start, eight quality starts in a row. 
And he's five and one over his last seven starts, so he's been pitching very well. And 25 game winner against the Twins. That's the most against any opponent that he has faced. Bouncer headed up the middle, backhanded by Beckham, and he throws to get Revere one away. Very little time to waste if you're an infielder when Ben Revere puts the ball on the ground. The Northland Ford defense for the White Sox. Pierre, Rios, and Quentin across the outfield. Morrell, Ramirez, Beckham, Canerco, and Pierzynski catching the day game after the night game. One gone, and here's Alexi Casilla. You know, that's one thing about A.J. Pierzynski. He wants to play. He doesn't want to sit. And the night game last night, a quick game at that, but he's back behind the plate. A little bouncer up the line, and Casilla is going to be retired. Oh, what a play by Burley. Burley's won a gold glove, and he's made some of the most incredible plays coming off the mound, and that's one of them. I didn't think there was any chance at all of him getting Casilla. Yoshi Nishioka. This was supposed to have happened back on April 8th for the Twins' uh, first home game of the season, but Neosha, uh, Nishioka introduced here at Target Field, and he takes a strike at the knee. Yeah, going back to that play up early, I mean, didn't panic. He got over there. He thought the ball was going to be a hit, hit a little bit more toward third base bag, and by the time he got there, picked up the ball and threw a strike over to Conurco. So barehanded, spin and throw, and got the speedy Casilla first. Outside, I beg your pardon, outside corner, one and two. Laz Diaz behind the plate. Early 32 years old, making his 348th Major League start. And trying to expand that outside corner. Two and two. If you're a defensive player behind Mark Burley, you don't play on your heels. You're always on your toes because he does throw strikes. Early 86 and two thirds innings coming into this ball game, only 21 walks. Now two intentional with 43 strikeouts. Nishioka hitting third, probably just a one-day rental with Joe Mauer expected back into the lineup tomorrow night. We expect Mauer to hit third, and so Nishioka for probably just today's game will hit third. All the rehabbing finally got into some ball games. Four in Fort Myers, and three in Rochester. Burley strikes him out and he has a quick one, two, three first inning. Welcome back to Target Field. Scoreless after an inning. I'm Robbie and Smikowski. Siyoshi Nishioka back into the lineup. And Ozzie Guillen, manager of the White Sox, never won to mince words, has a plan for how he's going to play Nishi. I, I never see this kid play. Uh, we're going to go after her very hard in second base. Be, telling, be careful with Carlos Quintin. <laughs> you know what I mean? The people go here, they're going to go after her. 
and uh, I hope the kids learn from that. I hope he not get hurt again. But what he's paid for it, I don't know yet because I know see, I've never seen him play. And, of course, that's a very candid Ozzie Guillen, as you'd expect. But part of that is Tadaguchi, when he played for the White Sox, they had to teach him to adjust from the Japanese-style baseball, Dickenbert, over to the American style. And players coming in harder and how you have to jump at second base as Nishioka learned the hard way back in New York earlier this season. He has never lost for words, is he? It's, you know, Carlos Quentin, is he going to be able to take him out at second base? Unbelievable. Never at a loss for words. I just <laughs> haven't figured out what exactly those words were. We got about every third or fourth word. Hey, Roy Smalley, you're down there. <laughs> what 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 are you looking for from Nishioka at shortstop now? Well, it's a position, guys, that he's very comfortable with. He's played there most of his life, and Ozzy's uh, words notwithstanding, I don't think he's going to have a, a big problem with guys sliding into him. But I'll tell you, he got the first inning, I think, uh, the dream first inning for him. You know how much... He must have had butterflies starting his first game here in front of the hometown fans in, in Target Field. And to get a one, routine one hopper in the first inning and then a little bit of tougher play, but to get two ground balls out of three in the first inning, that's perfect. Now to the hole, and he'll be able to glove it. He's got a chance. But Konerko, who doesn't run well, does get an infield hit, but still a very nice play by Nishioka diving in the hole. Roy, I think that's the play that everybody's wondering about. Does he have the arm strength to do this? Now, this is a base hit. I mean, he's you know, a great play. That's a base hit all the way. There's not anybody going to make that play uh, just based on stronger uh, arm strength, in my opinion. That's a terrific athletic play, and I think he's got enough. There are just aren't going to be that many plays where you look back and say, boy, if he just had a little bit more arm, all the defense would have been different. I, I just don't see it. First hit of the game, an infield hit to Konerko, and here's A.J. Pierzynski. And last night's game again, the White Sox bounced into four double plays. Here's a liner to right of base hit. So Pierzynski lifts one into the outfield. And the White Sox have runners at first and second with nobody out. Let's go back to New York when this happened. Nick Swisher just trying to break up a double play, went in hard. I mean, nothing you know bad about that slide and Nishioka. I think uh, Paul Molitor really worked with him a lot down in spring training or Fort Myers about uh, you know getting out of the way. So, like Robbie said, he he learned the hard hard way. Here's Alex Rios, and that's the type of play uh, similar for a middle infielder to Buster Posey's play as a catcher. You know, I mean collisions. Happen, yep. and in Posey's case, he's lost for the year because of a collision. But we see plays like that all the time in the middle infield. Well, Roy Smalley knows you know it better than anybody here at the ballpark. You know, and with your second base or shortstop, you have to be ready for contact. It's going to happen all the time. They're going, they're coming after you, and well, they should. And that I think was just a little bit of unfamiliarity with the footwork at second base when uh, Nishioka got hurt. Not a bad or uh, dirty slide by Swisher at all, but it took him a little bit of a longer time to get rid of the ball. It was less about footwork, in my opinion, more about the fact that he just had a double clutch just a little bit enough to get let Swisher get on top of him. One and one to Rios, and the pitch fouled back. Just beneath us. And there isn't much that is beneath uh, I'll us. I'll tell you what, there's a fan sitting right below us here that, that had the ball in his hand and it dropped into the lower deck. Yeah. Mm. Mike, I'm going to give him the benefit it's, of the doubt. He reached with his right hand, uh, I'm guessing he's a right handed throw. Uh, and, you know, it's a second inning, so he's going to hear about it for the next eight innings. One and two to Rios. A liner! And a ball thrown away! Konerko to third and he's going to be held there. Blackburn tried to turn it into a double play and he tried to meet Hughes at the bag but the throw errant and the White Sox move both runners into scoring position. Yeah, should be an error on Nick Blackburn right here. You know I mean he caught I mean Rios hits this ball sharply Blackburn out of reaction catches it and then sees that you know he might have a shot at A.J. Pruszynski. And then Blackie a little of course you're upset and threw the ball away. So both runners advance. And if the runners had been uh, 
any other runners in the Chicago lineup, a run would have scored, and there would have been a runner at third. But Konerko and Pierzynski, neither of whom run well, are at third and second. Here's Adam Dunn. Fouled back. Now Dunn, in a sense, the perfect guy for Blackburn to face here. Not that Blackburn's a big strikeout guy, but Adam Dunn is. And what Blackburn would love to do here is retire Dunn on strikes. Blackburn 46 strikeouts and 84 innings pitched. Done. He's not really a strikeout pitcher. 84 strikeouts in 202 at bats, and he's quickly done is behind in the count 0 and 2. Twins baseball brought to you in Sony high definition, which of course will be of no value to you if you still have rabbit ears on your TV set. Find out right here what Blackburn and Rene Rivera feel his strikeout pitch might be. Done a big man. 0 and 2. With a big swing. Check this one. When you've struck out about half the time, you've got to have quite a few holes in your swing. Well, he went to that little slider inside. And Dunn able to hold up. One and two to Adam Dunn. Flip foul. One of the things that the White Sox did a very poor job of last night was simply advancing runners. They had a leadoff double from Dunn, didn't get him around. Ninth inning started with a single and a double, and they never scored a run in the ninth inning. Yeah, I don't think you want to throw anything soft to Adam Dunn because he'll turn it over and just maybe hit a ground ball, and that should score a run. You want to stay something hard, maybe a fastball up like that right there, but done laid off of it. Two and two, almost put it in at the belt. Yep, not a bad pitch right there. Hmm. And Rivera out to talk to Blackburn about this 2 2 pitch. Dunn leading the American League in strikeouts with the 84. Two and two to Adam Dunn. Little pop up. Nishioka. And it's the left fielder. Repko coming in to make the play. Out number two and no chance for either runner to advance. In today's game, we're participating in the home run challenge. And today, every home run in this game raises $19,000 for prostate cancer research. And you can make a pledge by calling 800 798 Cure. Or go online to www.pcf.org. This is why I think Nick Blackburn is 4-0 over his last eight starts. Fastball in. Blackburn known to have a great sinker. But what I've seen him do is work both sides of the plate. Good pitch right there. A hard fastball. Tied up done. Little fly ball to left field. Konerko could not score. Now Beckham. Again, they went at him hard. They didn't want to throw in things soft where he might be able to just make contact and hit a ground ball out. Big out for the Twins and Nick Blackburn. Even bigger if they can get Beckham and keep mm -hmm. the White Sox from scoring. Bouncer to third. Valencia has it. And Blackburn pitches around a couple of hits and his own error. Still no score.
Minnesota.com to plan your next Minnesota vacation today. It's a quiet evening setting on Moose Lake near Ely, Minnesota, 20 miles northeast of uh, Ely. Deep access into the Boundary Waters Canoe Area and the gateway to the BWCA. Just a great place to spend a summer vacation. Moose Lake right next to Ashigan Lake. Ima. And I think we've talked about it before. One of the worst names for a lake, Disappointment Lake. <laughs> if you're going to go fishing, why would you go fishing on Disappointment Lake? Michael Kanai are leading things off for the Twins in the second, and everything happening quickly here. It's two and one, and now two and two. Well, these two guys have faced each other a lot. 93 at bats for Michael Kadire against Mark Burley. He has 31 hits, a couple home runs, hitting 333. Have you ever, in your 40 years or whatever around Major League Baseball, seen anybody work as quickly as Mark Burley? This side of Jim Cott when he was with the White Sox. High drive to deep left center field. Kadire lifts it back and goal! Home run number 10 for Michael Kadire, and again, good success against Burley over their meetings. Kadire putting the Twins up one to nothing. Burley's going to challenge you, and Kadire got the barrel of the bat out quickly. Hit it into the bullpen area. Elman Young takes outside, and with that home run, another 19,000 has been raised to support prostate cancer research. And you can donate going to 800 798 Cure or online www.pcf.org. Young has had great success against Mark Burley, 13 for 33, with three home runs. Yeah, going back to Mark Burley, I mean, he's a guy that gets on that ball on the rubber. I, I would have to say I remember Bob Gibson worked quickly. You know, he didn't waste a lot of time. This one lifted to center and retreating as Rios. One away. But definitely Jim Cott, when he was with Chicago White Sox, had that speed up delivery, and he won 20 games two years in a row by doing that. That was a former manager of yours, uh, Chuck Tanner's, I think, right. brainstorm with Jim Cott. Just to try to change things up and alter you know, the pattern that Jim had established for what 15 years at that point in the big leagues. Here's Luke Hughes. Well, Michael Kadire, I mean, he's been red hot over his last 27 games coming into this game, hitting 330 with six home runs. And now he, today, first at bat, a home run against Burley. Bouncer to third, easy play for Morell. Hughes is retired, two gone. And that'll bring up Danny Valencia. Valencia got a hit in his last at bat, but he actually had four pretty good at bats last night. I think some signs of encouragement coming from the Twins' third base. Well, just showing Kadire there. I hope fans start to realize that, you know, if the Twins are going to have an All Star represent some the Twins at the All Star game in Arizona. Michael Kadire has got to be right on top of your list when you vote. One strike to Valencia. And another chance for Morell. Two hopper. Over to Canerco and the inning ends. But the inning starts with a Kadire home run, and the Twins take the first lead against the White Sox.
head to head to determine which is the most memorable of all time. Go to MLB.com slash moments. Vote now for your favorite Midsummer Classics and tune into the 2011 MLB All-Star Game on Tuesday, July 12th at 7 p.m. Central on Fox. Find out who won. I think we, one of my favorites was uh, something we replayed a couple of weeks ago as we remembered Harmon Killebrew. Harmon's home run at Met Stadium linked with Herb Carneal's play-by-play -play call of that home run. Uh, one of my very special All-Star Game memories. It's probably not on the list of the top 16, though. One and one to Brent Morrell. Morrell got off to a real slow start. Now he's starting to pick things up offensively. Nishioka to his left. Good play. Good throw. One away. Well, Blackburn getting some ground ball outs. Five ground ball outs for Nick Blackburn. And Roy Smalley, what he's doing so well, what we're seeing the Chicago White Sox do is swing early. Now that's a third pitch in that at bat. But here's Nishioka making a nice play. Pavano last night, 26 of 32 first pitch strikes. Right, Bert. It's clear that after two innings and a third here, the White Sox, after taking a lot of first pitch strikes last night, their game plan is clear what their game plan is. It's go to swing and early. And, and uh, Pierre taking one of the first few first pitch strikes there. Most of the guys are coming up hacking. And so that you know Burke that presents a little bit of a, a challenge to a pitcher doesn't it? you just can't throw a batting practice fastball in there sometimes you have to mix in a breaking ball on the first pitch. Yeah Pavano did a great job last night getting ahead in the count and uh, Blackburn there's a good fastball inside you know if guys are going to swing early if you're going to throw strikes what you do is expand that plate a little bit if, you're, if you know that they're going to be swinging right off the get go throw it a little bit outside make it a you know a, a hittable pitch but off the plate rather than right down the middle. There's a fine line, isn't there, between getting ahead and, and uh, not throwing it in the middle of the plate? Oh, for sure. Good change up right there, but missing a low. Full count now to Juan Pierre. Of course, the Twins don't want to put his speed at first. In beating the White Sox uncharacteristically for Blackburn, he did walk four men back in early May in Chicago. Bouncer right side. Casilla to Hughes, two away. Tomorrow night's another Lifetime Fitness Friday. The Twins will be hosting the Padres, who are already in the Twin Cities. If you have a ticket to tomorrow's game, you can log on to lifetimefitness.com slash twins and get a complimentary seven-day pass to Lifetime Fitness. Call 833-TWINS. Check on ticket availability for Friday night's game here against the Padres. Here's Alexi Ramirez. Bounced to short his first time up. Butted in the air and back to the screen. And Pavano last night, first 13 batters he faced, strike one. Right now, Nick Blackburn, 11 batters, got ahead, strike one. And Bird, I know so how much you like suit. that. Yeah. I know how much you like that bunt with two with two outs too. <laughs> no, right? I don't like it at all. I, you know, I was going to ask you that, Roy. You know, here you got a guy that's got some power. You know, I mean, he, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He, he's got 17 doubles. Why do you butt with two outs? No, I hate I hate it unless you're absolutely guaranteeing the manager that if you get on with you're going to steal second base. Uh, I, I can't stand the play with two out. You're absolutely right. Hit a double hit it. Get yourself in the scoring position or hit one out of the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Not now though. <laughs> no, that's just the, that's the plan. <laughs> Strike three. And Rivera will throw to Hughes to end the inning. A one two three third for Blackburn.
trivia question today who are the two left handed pitchers to win 20 games against the Twins. Rivera off the end of the bat a little squibber up the line and it just rolled foul. Right, that's a mistake right down by Canerco. He has to go get that ball right there. He kept waiting back on it. Uh, especially as hard as it hit right here, Canerco, you can see kind of staying behind the bag. He's got to charge that ball and hopefully get it in fair territory. Would have been an easy out. Rivera, Repco, and Revere face Burley here in the third. Swing and a miss. Two strikes. Well, Burley not only throws strikes, he changes speeds extremely well. In the dirt. Well, Burley's got to be one of those lefties who's 120 against the Twins. He's 125. Yeah, I already mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So, so we're in there. We were listening. Well, we got the uh, we got the answer correct. We don't have to. And very often do we get the complete answer correct? Just part of it. Two and two. How many times has Sabathia beaten the Twins? You spoke. I don't think twenty. There's a bouncer up the line, and that one will roll foul. Well, you'd think it'd be somebody who at least has spent some time in the American League Central, since that's where most of the uh, action is within the division. Two and two to the Twins catcher. Line foul by a couple of feet. With Maurer coming back to the active roster tomorrow, it stands to reason that Rivera or Butera will be sent down. They both have done a nice job. Remember, Steve Holm for a while was up splitting time behind the plate. That's hit a long way to left center field. And Rios back on the track, just a little bit short of where Kadair hit his out. Rivera has his fly ball caught on the track, going away. You can ask us a question online at carsoup.com forward slash baseball. Charles, boy, Charles, my apologies in advance. Skevlin of Austin. That's S how I would have S K J E V E L A N D. <laughs> when players are up and down from AAA, how are they paid? Are they paid a prorated Major League Baseball minimum? Here's a drive to center off the bat of Repco. Rios has to retreat to make that catch two down. Well, some players sign split contracts. Some players just sign a major league contract. So if they do get sent down, they still get major league uh, type of salary. But uh, most, uh, I think, guys like uh, Jason Repko probably sign a, a contract where if he does get sent down, he still gets paid. You know what he signs for. Right, right, and that's uh, I think the case with Drew Butera too. I think that, and I, that might be the deciding factor as to. You know which catcher stays and which one goes. One and zero to Ben Revere hit a bouncer to Beckham his first time up a strike one and one. With the vague end date regarding Denard Span situation, Ben Revere might become a critical part of the puzzle here for the Twins. As they hope to continue their climb out of the basement in the in the division, Span feels a little bit better every day, but there is no. Revere takes a early pitch against the rib cage, the elbow. After three straight breaking balls, Burley tried to go inside with a fastball, and that's his first hit batsman of the year. And you don't want to put that speed on the bases. Span getting it in the ribs. Early, very good move. He's one of the best as far as pickoffs. A tough guy to run against. I'm sure that's what Jerry White's telling Ben Revere right there. Be careful. Twins stole five bases and five tries against Gavin Floyd last night. And Revere checked right away. It's been a problem for the White Sox. In fact, they were here on the field before batting practice yesterday working on holding runners. His teams have been running. The Liberally against the White Sox, up and away, ball one. I guarantee you, Burley probably was not out there. <laughs> probably no. the right-handed pitchers, because Burley he has been outstanding over his career, his 12th season at the major league level. 
Opponents are 61 for 75 in stealing against the White Sox. So and in, of those 14 caught stealing, eight of them have been on pickoffs, like Burley's pickoff move. So the catchers either haven't had a chance to throw out the runners, or they've done a poor job of doing it. 2 and 0 oh to Casilla. Well, since 2001, when Burley was put in that starting rotation, he has had 77 pickoffs. That's the most in the American League and all of baseball since 2001. Up and away, 3 and 0, oh, and Revere might not have to steal second base. Well, even on that pitch right there, Ben Revere went back toward first. Three and zero oh to Casilla. Mm. So a hit batter backed up by a four pitch walk, and here comes Nishioka. Twins trying to do something here with two gone in the inning. Not just uh, two runners on, but two speedy runners on, and another speedy guy at the plate. Nishioka went down swinging. His first time up. Yeah, Burley got him to chase a high fastball. So we we'll see if Nishioka, you know, adjust to Mark Burley right here. He's never faced Mark Burley. Burley struck him out in that first at bat. Twenty-five at bats in the big leagues for Nishioka. A couple of runs batted in. And he takes strike one. Off-speed pitch right there. Clocked at 80 miles an hour. Add and subtract. That's what Mark Burley's about. And an excellent control both sides of the plate. Fouled away, two strikes. Got the slider right there at 85. <laughs> oh and two. It's Yoshi Nishioka. Played one and two. Twins have just the one hit against Burley. It was Kadiner's home run leading off the second. That's to center. Hit right at Rios. And Burley leaves a couple of runners aboard in the third. Out of the fourth, it's one nothing twin. Click on to 
Circle me, Bert, and submit an email on why your sign should be circled for an upcoming home game and have a chance to visit us up here in the booth. We will reveal two of the sections the morning before each game. One will be listed on FoxSportNorth.com and the other one on KFAN.com. Carlos Quentin waves at strike one from Nick Blackburn. Twins have done a nice job so far pitching to Quentin with a lot of off speed stuff. Keeping him off balance. Pavano with a masterful outing last night. One and one. Blackburn gave up a couple of hits to start the second inning and then kind of compounded the threat by throwing a, a ball wildly to first. And the White Sox had a chance, second and third one out, but they didn't score. And Quentin hit by a pitch, a common occurrence for him, and he's aboard to start the fourth inning. Yeah, Quentin really doesn't give away much at all. I mean, he just kind of stood there and took it. And that's the 14th time this year he's been hit by a pitch. That leads the major leagues by being hit by a pitch. Canerco hit a ground ball toward the hole. It was cut off by Nishioka, but there was no chance to get it out at first. Canerco ended up being left at third base. Again, the Twins turned four double plays last night. And they're hoping to get Canerco to wrap into a double play here. Fouled away, one strike. Well, here's our lucky winners today from, uh, I believe it's LaCent LaCenter, Minnesota. Welcome to the booth. Enjoy. A lot of smiling faces up here in the booth. Enjoying our view. We have a beautiful view here at Target Field. Down and away, one and one. Now Blackburn's had six double plays turned behind him. Of course, if could make Canerco hit the ball on the ground, he's not the quickest down the line, but he's been swinging a hot bat. You see the batting average at 321. Swing and a miss, one and two. Canerco seemingly getting better with age. Had, uh, in some respects, a career year last year, but the way things are going, he might better it this year. One and two. Bouncer to Nishioka. Out there. And a double play. And Casilla gets wiped out by Quentin. And the Twins turn their fifth double play in this little two game series. Nice turn right there, and Casilla. He has to hold ground right there. Watch Casilla and Quentin. That's who Ozzie Guillen was talking about. That comes in hard, and Quentin a wow. late slide and a tumble. Now, if Mishioka had broken his leg on a play like that, I think the Twins would have had issue yeah. with that. That's a rolling block. Yeah. This is. Yeah, Roy, uh, this is a little uncalled for, in my opinion, right there. I would remember that if I'm a pitcher on the mound. Yeah, and if you're a middle infielder also, uh, there'll be a time at some point in time when you get the ball a little quicker and you can come from down under. But see how Lexi got rid of the ball and then got his leg off, and left leg off the ground. Mm -hmm. So that made a big difference. Rolls up the middle. Pierzynski has his second hit. So then, when the uh, when the guy rolls into him, he's rolling into a leg that's not firmly planted in the ground and doesn't get stuck there and break something. And that's just uh, something that Lexington knows how to do. But going back to your point, Bert, the pitcher would remember that. But certainly, as a shortstop, I would remember that at, at some point in time during the season, I'm going to have the ball, and Quentin won't be so close. And you'll see me throwing for where I'm almost dragging my knuckles on the ground. Right. And, it, and it may not be today, too. It'll no, 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 no. It doesn't have that. to. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's going to be sometime this year. He's going to go down hard early, or it's going to be, it's going to hit him somewhere. Yeah, he's been hit 14 times already this year. I, 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 if I was, it's going to be at least 15 for sure. <laughs> That, that's uncalled for. That that you're gonna maybe ruin somebody's career by that that slide that Quinton did right there. That wasn't the Nick Swisher slide that took out Nishioka. No, that was a, that was a nasty slide. Let me ask you guys about that because with Swisher there was a little bit of a leg whip, yeah. but he was reaching for the base and his leg swung out toward the inside. No problem with that, right? No, not at all. But with Quinton's, I do. The little roller. Nishioka goes to the bag and ends the inning. 
So a scoreless fourth, and it's one nothing Twins. And maybe bookmark that slide into second base on the double play ground. On Fox Sports North is brought to you by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. By AT&T. And by Comcast. Call Comcast Business Class at 800-391-3000 to turn your business into a fast business. And Mark Burley has his first pitch tap foul from, uh, from Michael Kadire leading off the fourth inning. One strike. Now base hit to right field. So Kadire doing a little bit of everything in this series with a career high three stolen bases last night and today a home run and a single. Well, you know, with a lot of the heavy hitters out for the Twins, somebody has to step up. And boy, has Michael Kadire stepped up. The home run in his first at bat right there got a pitch up and didn't try to pull it, just taking it the other way. That's another reason I think we've seen Kadire's average go from about 220 to almost 280 now. And now 27 runs batted in with no runs batted in the first three weeks of the season. This one popped up near the Twins dugout and it's out of play. You know the, the RBI total still uh, on the low side, but you know, Kadir at a critical point in this season has stepped it up. I and mean, it wasn't that long ago. The Twins were 16 and a half games out. And with last night's win, they're nine games back, and they figure to be a factor in the race. When they were all but forgotten just a couple of weeks ago. Young pops another one up. This one's in play, and Canerco is going to put it in his back pocket. One down. And think if you're, you know, coaching or managing the All Star game, how valuable a player like Kadire would be because he can play so many different positions. Well, it'd be a great honor for Kadire. I mean, he represents the Minnesota Twins as good as anybody that's ever wore a uniform with this, you know, off the field stuff. He and his wife, uh, uh, Claudia, do a great job of, of giving back. And, you know, he's never made an all-star team. It would be a great honor for Kadire. And I don't even know how much of a role the manager of the team has in actually forming the team, but I think Safe to say, Michael Kadire is Ron Washington's type of player. One and zero to Luke Hughes. Bounce to third his first time up. Two and zero. And he's trying to do something with Kadire's leadoff hit. And again, Kadire did steal three bases last night, but that was against a right-hander, Gavin Floyd. And every time the Twins have had a runner on first, Hurley seems to be a little uh, struggling with his control a little bit. Well, Kadir's lead, you can see one, two step, and then a half, and then he's not going to get off very far against Burley. 
You can fit. <laughs> you can fit Sunday's newspaper between. Yep. Could iron in the bag. If he dove back, he kind of went back. If he dove back, he's going to hit his chest on the bag. You respect his move, Burley's move. Burley says, "Well, that's what you get for stealing three bases." <laughs> three and one. Foul back. Now one of the steals was on the back end of a double steal, but still a pretty impressive night. Yeah, Kadir in the first inning with two outs. He stole second base, got into scoring position. There's the uh, the back-to-back -back stolen bases by Casilla and, and Kadir in the third inning when the Twins scored three runs, and then he scored one in the eighth inning, and added that kind of insurance run, a big. Uh, RBI double by Danny Valencia to score Kadir. Full count to Hughes. And a strikeout, and now Kadir hung up in between second and first, and he gets back safely. Went halfway, slammed on the brakes, and got back to the bag. Yeah, maybe a hit and run put on right there by Ron Gardenhire. One thing that Gardy said, he likes the hit and run, especially with these guys. He wants to continue running. Now Kadir has to make sure the, the throw is toward home plate, but AJ Brzezinski's throw to second base and, and Michael I think saw that he swung and missed. Hughes did, and he got back to first base. Well, that keeps the inning alive. His ability to get back to first and Valencia at the plate. Mark Burley's one of them. I'm just going to go with Sabathia. Chuck Finley. Oh, Chuck Finley, the guy that couldn't uh, always tell covering first base. Well, now wait just a minute. He's my roommate, and uh, no, no. not my roommate, but my teammate. But it, Finley's not an active pitcher. I thought we were talking about active pitchers. You mean to tell me Mickey Lodge didn't beat the Twins 20 times? You mean to tell me that you know who are the other great left-handed uh, pitchers? You would think Baltimore with Mike Cuellar yeah. and McNally. Yeah. I I bring the integrity of our question into question. I like it. Call him out. One and one to Valencia, and a pop-up yeah. heading back our way. I think that's Bruce Wolf, isn't it? Right on. The, well, the all the more reason to question the validity of the question. One and two to Valencia. And I'll throw to first. Every once in a while, you'll hear a base runner, or maybe even an announcer, talk about a guy taking off on first movement. This would be one of the guys. You would do that with. He's so deceptive on the mound. And if you want to steal second, you just go on the first twitch you see. Pretty risky move. Yeah, that's about the only way you're going to get there. Right. Two and two. Breaking ball, foul back. Let's just spend an awful lot of time working with Twins hitting coach Joe Vavra, and we want to pass along yep. happy birthday wishes to Joe's mother, Gladys, 86 years old today. Happy birthday. Yes, Gladys, happy birthday to you. Tony, you should we sing Gladys happy birthday? No, I don't think she's 86 years old. You know, she does not want to hear you sing. Now three and two. I'll bet your Kanaya goes now. I have a feeling people half Gladys' age don't want to hear me sing. I concur. <laughs> Three and two to Valencia. And Kadir goes, and there's a liner to the third baseman. Lead off single, but Kadir never budges from first base, and it's still one to nothing.
A 1 0 Twins lead. The Twins have beaten the White Sox in all three games so far. Roy Smalley, Robbie Insmikowski, Burt Blatt, and Vic Bramer here as we go to the fifth, and Adam Dunn leading things off. And a fastball, strike one. And another strike one for Nick Blackburn. 16 for 16 now, and getting ahead in the count for Nick Blackburn. This is just his 50th pitch of the ballgame, now 51. Some are saying Dunn's having a tough time adapting to the DH role in his first year in the American League. Bounced foul. It's not a transition everyone has made successfully. Once again, on the White Sox getting Dunn in to provide some more power to an already powerful lineup. A towering pop up to short right field. With the catch rolling away. Well, for Adam Dunn, 361 home runs in his career. And you can see over his last eight seasons, he's averaged between 38 and 46 home runs. So the White Sox hoping that, uh, you know, he'll accept the DH role and do what he's been able to do so well over his career. He's played some first base, he's played some outfield. Here's Beckham. And if he's going to play this weekend in Arizona, he'll have to bring a glove with him because the White Sox are going to play by National League rules this weekend. One and oh. And Beckham takes ball two. First batter that the Blackburn has fallen behind. And a 2 0 pitch grounded weakly to Nishioka. Two down. The NHL draft is coming to St. Paul Friday, June 24. You can log on to foxsportsnorth.com, click on the fan zone tab for the chance to win a VIP experience at the NHL draft, including draft tickets, a behind the scenes tour, and more. And if you aren't a member of the fan zone, you can join now. It's fast, it's free, it's all at the fan zone tab on foxsportsnorth.com. Justin Morneau in mourning with the Vancouver Canucks losing in the NHL Stanley Cup Finals last night. Morrell with a sharp single to center. Comes with two outs in the fifth. And the Boston Bruins, the Stanley Cup champs. And Mike Greenlee. Wild analyst enjoying outdoor baseball and yeah, outdoor hot, baseball I'll, I'll food. Circle them right there. Here's Juan Pierre. A couple of ground balls to second for Pierre. Like a good man. Strike one. Eighteen and nineteen first pitch strikes for Blackburn. And Pierre just one for twelve lifetime against Nick Blackburn. That's driven to right. Kadair has to retreat a few steps to end the inning. A scoreless fifth. Five scoreless innings for Blackburn. And a one nothing Twins lead.
dollars right here at Minnesota State Lottery tickets. Bert, you'll love this one. This is Jim Steinbauer, made his way from Owatonna, celebrating his 80th birthday today. He's a Korean War veteran, diehard Twins fan, watches games here with his great grandkids, with his granddaughter, having a good time. Jim, what does it mean to be circled by Bert today for your birthday? Awesome, awesome. Anything you want to say to Bert? Yeah, Bert. I'd like to see you down in Owatonna again at the caravan. Get back there to Owatonna, Bert. The onus is on you, buddy. You got it, Jim. Happy birthday to you, young man. And you are here by circle. 1 0 to Rene Rivera leading off the Twins fifth, and Burley delivers up and away again, 2 0. Burley's given up just two hits. They both been to Michael Kadair. One of them cleared the fence in left center field. 2 and 1. Burley's in the last year of his contract with the White Sox. He's hit down the left field line and back in the seats. When he signed his deal, the current deal, years ago, he agreed to terms while the Twins were in Chicago. There was a kind of a, a weird scene in the dugout. Burley came out during the game to shake hands with his teammates, and we didn't know whether that meant he was gone at the trading deadline or whether he had re up. Turns out he had re up three and two. Well, he's a guy you want to build a staff around. He's only 32 years old already in his 12th season at the major league level. Nobody's pitched more innings at the major league level since 2001 than Mark Burley. Fly ball to left and Pierre comes in, makes a running catch. Rivera is retired, one down. Twin single game suites are very popular again this year. Most are sold out. But there's a great chance to take advantage of these hospitality areas during the 4th of July weekend. You could spend America's birthday enjoying America's pastime. Call 833 Twins and ask about the Twins single game suite options. One gone, here's Jason Repko. Now, in recent days, Burley has said, Yeah, I, I might re sign with the White Sox, I might sign with the Cardinals, I might call it quits. Rocket foul. So at least he's opened up the possibility that he would stay with Chicago, and I'm sure it's in Chicago's best interest to try oh. to get that done. Yeah, I hope so because this guy, I mean, he's a he's a competitor. He's out there every fifth day, and sometimes a sixth day now if they if PV comes back. But a guy that's uh, guaranteed to win you twin ten plus games each year. And over 200 innings a year. And Repco pokes a single to left. He's aboard with one out in the fifth. And that gets Revere to the plate. And our window concepts, window of opportunity. And the great job Revere has done at the plate and in the field. Yeah, I think uh, he's, he brought a lot of energy with him from uh, AAA. And Ben Revere a couple times up with the Twins, stealing six bases in seven attempts. I think Gardy loves his attitude, his, his, you know, coming to the ballpark every day with that smile on his face. Bouncer to second. Beckham fires to Ramirez, and Revere beats the relay. So Revere reaches on a fielder's choice to away. A tough guy to double up. Revere hard ground ball. Beckham perfect throw to Ramirez. Good strong throw, but Rivera beats it out. Now he's at first base with two outs. Here's Casilla. All for one with a walk. Burley's making his 47th career start against the Twins. 25 wins, 18 losses. And here in Minnesota, he is 11 and 10. With an ERA just over four. Bouncer to short. And Ramirez goes the short way to end the fifth inning. On to the sixth. But here's solo home run, the only run of the game.
almost think there's a little pressure on uh, uh, us, twins, and the, the weatherman, weather women, to give the Padres good weather here. I mean, we, <laughs> you know, they don't come here all the time. One thing to have a game rained out against the White Sox, but the Padres, you know, we keep our fingers crossed with the weather. Ramirez takes a strike. Well, I think the last time we were there, that we were in June, it was that June gloom. Yeah, that, kind of drizzle. Oh, yep. We'll show them better weather here in Minnesota. One strike to Alexi Ramirez. And the ball drifted or lifted to right field and it lands in right field for a leadoff single. Ramirez is aboard in the sixth. And Carlos Quentin coming to the plate. Voting is ongoing for the 2011 All Star Game in Phoenix. You can vote for your favorite twins and your favorite players at twinsbaseball.com. Visit twinsbaseball.com, cast your ballot. Up to 25 times for your favorite players. Vote early and vote often at twinsbaseball.com. Well, here's Quentin. He was hit by a pitch leading off the fourth, and then he was taken care of on a double play grounder. Bounce foul. White Sox in roughly three and a half games have scored three runs against the Twins. Well, the Twins have, have attacked a strike zone here yesterday. Pavano, right now, Blackburn, here in the sixth inning. 60 pitches, 44 for strikes. No walks, one strikeout. Lifted to right. Harmlessly toward Kadire. One down. I'd like to say happy 60th anniversary to Shell and Lois Epstein of Golden Valley, Minnesota. Their grandson, Joe Morin, Morin works for the Twins. Happy 60th anniversary to the Epstein's. One gone, and here's Canerco hit into that double play in the fourth inning. Only the second fly ball out off of Blackburn in the ball game. Excuse me, third fly ball out. Canerco singled, ended up at third base in the second inning, and then the double play grounder in the fourth. Ten ground ball outs for Blackie. High and tight, ball one. And a strike. Well, the White Sox last year drifted back in the standings because they played poorly within the division. Just 32 and 40 in the American League Central, and they're six and ten this year. Yeah, Twins are 12 and 10 in the Central Division. That's having been swept by the Tigers twice, mm -hmm. and the Royals once. Well, Blackburn making his 15th career start against the White Sox. He's 4 0 here in Minnesota. Making his sixth start here. There we Should go. be Turn a double play. Bobbled, and Casilla <laughs> can't pick up the loose ball. So a tailor made double play ball, and Nishioka boots it, and the inning will continue. Well, an arrow will be charged to Nishioka, and then Casilla had a chance to get it, maybe in his glove, but he decides to try to barehand it to get the force out. So Nishioka charged with an error, his third of the year. You cast your vote for the Arby's value player of the game. Text the word value, followed by a space in the player's name. The short code 234 234. Second error of the game, first one charged to Blackburn back in the second inning. And now Pierzynski, who already has two singles against Blackburn, taking strike one. Huh. Bouncer to first. Hughes gets the out there relay not in time. Pierzynski beats the return throw from Nishioka first and third two down. And another chance two 
three six one double plays last night. We went over that with the instructional Roy Smalley showing how it was done. This time Hughes and the pitcher Blackburn getting over there, becoming the first baseman. But AJ Przinsky beats it out. The ball a little bit too deep. And AJ, even though he doesn't get that down, down that line that quickly, would have been a tough double play to turn. Here's Rios line back to Blackburn in the second, and then a ground ball to Nishioka in the four. And Blackburn with a 90 mile per hour fastball that split the plate in half. One strike to Rios. High fly center field should end the inning. The White Sox again cannot get a clutch hit against the Twins. Rios leaves two aboard. Six shutout innings for Nick Blackburn. Rod Carew, Tony Oliva with a visit to Children's Hospital. And of course, 15 years ago, Rod Carew lost his daughter Michelle to a form of leukemia. And he's been very instrumental in working on uh, the bone marrow donor program across the country. Siyoshi Nishioka taking ball one. Nishioka Kadair and Young facing Mark Burley. Tap foul, one and one. White Sox have five hits. The Twins have only three. Two by Kadir, the big home run leading off the second inning. That's been it so far in this ballgame. Kadir with two hits and Jason Repko with the other. One and two. Side corner Nishioka called out on strikes to start the sixth inning. Yeah, second time that Nishioka has struck out against Burley. Burley picking up his third strikeout. Michael Kadair will hit. And for the Century Link high speed pitch brought to you by Century Link high speed internet. Burley at 88. Blackburn clocked as high as 93. And Burley about add and subtract great control. Good slow curveball right there. 0 oh and 2. Cap to the left side. Morell fires on the run. Almost into the runner. Kadir two away. Well, 
Vizquel's kind of anchored third base for a while. Omar Vizquel was over there. They acquired Mark Tien from Kansas City to be their third baseman over a year ago. But Morrell started to hit a little bit, and they think defensively he's going to be one of the best in the American League. Mm -hmm. Here's Delman Young. Number. And Burley has time to make the play, and he has a quick bottom of the sixth. On to the seventh, one nothing twins. Traditional twins cap right there. And if you, if you'd like to look like us. <laughs> Why? The twins and Padres will close out the homestand, and you can get one of these caps. The first 5,000 males. Now, for you women, not that you'd want one like this anyway, but the women can't get this cap. That looks good on you. Thank you. Uh, it's a driver's cap, and you can uh, get them uh, by being here on Sunday. Limited tickets available. 833 twins or log on to twinsbaseball.com. It's called a driver's cap, but see, I think I'd be able to putt with this just fine. Yeah, I think you could. And what's nice is, you know, I could wear Mac words like this, and I like to TC yeah, the I shows. Could. From your days as a player. Yeah, sure. Adam Dunn pops it foul and out of play. You see, you're wearing it the traditional way. I, well, I, I always like, like to have like the visor. Like you know, I always like to have the visor. TC? Uh huh. Last year, the gimmick hat, if you'll forgive the term, was the fedora. Remember, they had those little uh, fedoras that they mm -hmm. gave away last year. We've had a cowboy hat promotion the last few years. So Dave Sims with the Seattle Mariners, he wears these. Is that right? Yeah. One and two. Just off the plate, two and two. That's what somebody told me once about Greek fishermen's caps. The only people who should wear them are Greek fishermen. <laughs> two and two. And now a full count. The White Sox have had three leadoff men on against Blackburn. Canerco's single in the second. Quentin hit by a pitch, and then Ramirez led off the sixth with a base hit. The first three ball count for Blackburn and his first walk of the ball game. And they'll bring up Gordon Beckham. Well, a couple away, then he tried to go inside, and boy, just miss it. Down and in. Beckham with a couple of grounders to the left side of the infield. One to Valencia, one to Nishioka. Twins bullpen, obviously in great shape. They had an off day, a rain out, and a complete game. So if or when we get the, the bullpen warmed up, they'll be ready to go. Ball one to Beckham. Oh, pitch count still good for Blackburn. This will be pitch number 75 in the ball game. Two and 
teams have not been able to run much against Blackburn. Ten stolen base attempts, five successful ones. His pickoff came against the White Sox after Juan Pierre led off in Chicago by reaching base. Blackburn promptly picked him off and done. A little bit of a tough time getting back to the bag there. Yeah, of course, Adam Dunn, not a base stealer. He attempted one this year and he was thrown out. But a couple of throwovers, maybe uh, the thing, Twins thinking, maybe a hit and run put on by the White Sox. Jeff Cox, the third base coach. Harold Baines over at first, and they pitch out. So, yeah, I think that they, Steve Little, very good at that. Scotty Alger, the bench coach, trying to pick up the signs. They play each other so many times that, uh, of course, there's Steve Little going through signs that he gives to the catcher, Rene Rivera. 2 0. Oh. Foul into the seats two and one. I say they play each other so many times. You know, a lot of teams will change the indicator on a daily basis, meaning that you know that's that's kind of if you touch, say your your hand skin to skin, the next sign is maybe a steal or a take or a hit and run. Two and two. Blackburn comes inside. Even in a little two game series. I mean, the White Sox and Twins getting two games in in 24 hours, and they still might change the signs. Well, with cameras today, you know, I mean, yeah. video, I mean, you know, yeah, you almost have to on a daily basis. Bouncer right side, see right. if they can turn this one. They missed in the sixth. And they convert the double play opportunity in the seventh. Well, again, the White Sox hit into four double plays yesterday. Beckham hit into one. A 6 4 3 or 6 4 1 double play here. Beckham, a nice little 4 6 3 double play. So, second double play turned behind Nick Blackburn. Two down, bases empty for Brent Morrell. He singled to center, a line drive hit his last time up. And now Nishioka gets another ground ball to his left. Good inning for Blackburn after the leadoff walk, facing just three men in the inning. Time for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Medica. Slash link and by Goldman Sachs for all the reasons you invest. Mutual funds from Goldman Sachs. Moving right along, Nick Blackburn with seven shutout innings, a one nothing lead. And the Twins will send up Luke Hughes to start their half of the seventh. And strike one from Mark Burley.
Bouncer foul. Well, there's not much you can do when you give up a home run in the second inning and you're down one to nothing, but continue to put zeros on the board, and that's what Burley's been able to do. He's given up only two hits since the second inning when Kadir hit the solo home run to lead off that inning. One and two. And that's a weak ground ball to Ramirez. And Hughes is retired one away. And that'll bring up Valencia. I think again against a guy like Burley, he's, he's been so successful at the major league level, 154 major league wins, that you get yourself out. You know, I mean, he changes speed so well. Even that right there, Luke Hughes way out front, creating that little soft ground ball to short. It's almost like facing Catfish Hunter. You know, it's a comfortable 0 for 4. And Valencia gets jammed and a little bouncer to Ramirez. He makes another nice play, two down. You know, you look at Burley, and you said he's 32 years old. And he doesn't know if he wants to be away from his family for another few years. But as durable as he's been, and the style of pitcher that he is, if he wanted to, I, I could see him pitching another 10 years. I mean, he's a Jamie Moyer type of guy to me, where he's, he's always had great command and can you know, throw an assortment of off-speed pitches where he wants to throw them. And he knows how to pitch. This is a guy that didn't make his high school baseball team. <laughs> One and oh. Signed out of junior college by the White Sox. 38th round draft pick. Of course, the Twins just had to draft. You know, they drafted, I believe, 50, 52 players, but you don't know what you're going to get. He's not a number one pick. He was just kind of, okay, we'll give him a chance, and boy, has he run with it. It's one of those guys where when he was drafted, they probably. Uh, put the uh, radar gun on him. Saw him throwing in the mid 80s, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't give him an X-ray to see what was in his chest. Yeah. And Rivera draws a two-out walk, and that gets Repco to the plate. The second walk for Burley in the ball game. Repco singled his last time up. Over for a strike. Just off the inside corner, one and one. Detroit coming back from an early two nothing Cleveland lead to lead the Indians four to two. Jim Hoey and Chuck James, and they may just be warming up for the sake of warming up because of the three off days. One and two. Good change up right there. Repco way out front. Yeah, Blackburn after seven innings, he's at 82 pitches. Two and two. Burley's pitched a perfect game. He's pitched a no hitter, no hitter coming back in 2007, the perfect game against the Tampa Bay Rays in 2009. And then he backed that up with what, five perfect innings at the Metrodome against the Twins. And my goodness, all the talk about Johnny Vandermeer every time somebody threw a no hitter, and here's a guy who almost, well, you know, almost, but uh, threatened to pitch back to back perfect games. Alexi Ramirez in the outfield grass makes the catch and the twins are done in the seventh.
back in his first game at Target Field. Part of a double play, a couple double plays the Twins have turned in the ball game. Michael Kadire, the only run on the board this afternoon off the bat of Michael Kadire, his 10th home run, a solo home run leading off the top, bottom of the second. And Nick Blackburn has taken it from there. Seven solid innings for Blackburn. 82 pitches, 59 have been strikes, 14 ground ball outs. To go with six fly ball outs with his one strikeout. Juan Pierre 0 for 3, leading off the eighth. A little bit low, ball one. Well, both starters pitching outstanding. Another quality start for Mark Burley. It's nine in a row, and Nick Blackburn, nothing but zeros. Breaking ball called strike one and one. And Rivera will take care of it. Easily retiring Pierre one down. Arby's and Fox Sports North are giving you a chance to win a trip for two to Fort Myers, Florida. Just pick up an Arby's It's Good Mood Food code card every Friday at any participating Arby's. Then log on to FoxSportsNorth.com, click on the Fan Zone tab, enter the code for the chance to win. To enter, you must be a member of the Fan Zone, and you must be 18 or older. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com for complete contest details. Down and away, ball one to Ramirez. Watch Rivera right here. This is a bunt by Juan Pierre. Look how quick he gets out. And then able to get that ball into his glove and hand and then make a strong throw over to Hughes for a quick out. Towering pop up behind second base. Revere coming in. Out number two. So two quick outs here in the eighth, and that gets Carlos Quentin to the plate. They say good pitching always gets out good hitting, and the White Sox came in. They've won. They won not eight out of their last twelve ball games, losing last night. But tell you, Rick Anderson got to be very proud of his the way the staff has pitched for the Twins over their last twelve plus games. Twins coming in, winning ten of the last twelve games. Went no for two. Is hit by a pitch once, and a pop up coming back and out of play. When Perkins will be activated in time for tomorrow's series opener with the Padres. Joe Maurer will be here. And he'll be catching. Inside. And again, Quentin didn't bother budging. He doesn't budge at all. He nearly got hit by the pitch again. Outside two and one. Toward the hole, Nishioka with the catch, plants, fires. Safe at first, a fantastic play by Siyoshi Nishioka. But Quentin is ruled safe with an infield hit. Well, we were talking to Roy Smalley earlier about this play right here. I mean, he made a great play earlier on an infield base hit by Conurco, and right here, my goodness, off balance, still able to get something on that throw, and a bang bang play. And Quentin helping the umpire at first. Manny Gonzalez make the call, but wow, what a nice play by Nishioka. Oh, he's out. <laughs> Very close play. And now a dangerous hitter in Conurco given a chance here in the eighth inning. With a man aboard. I thought uh, as it first happened uh, that he was safe, but on the one replay, it looked to me like it was a very close play, but, but the ball got into Hughes's glove before the foot hit the bag. Up the middle, now a base hit, and Quentin will stop at second base. So the inning continues and the threat grows with two outs in the eighth. Canerco getting his second hit of the ball game. And Pierzynski to the plate. Two singles for Pierzynski and a bouncer to Luke Hughes. Yeah, that in the sixth inning when there was a runner at first and third. Rick Anderson, a quick trip to the mound. Talk to Nick Blackburn. 
92 pitches in the ball game for Blackburn. Harris and Alex Burnett start getting loose here. Mark Tian is going to run for Paul Konerko. So Konerko, the most dangerous Chicago hitter, comes out of the game here in the eighth inning. And Tian replaces him at first. So Ozzy Gann rolling the dice a little bit here. Well, Konerko not the quickest defeat, and you know, hoping for maybe an extra base hit that might score a T in over Konerko. And Konerko giving Pierzynski a big fist bump as he walked by him, saying, "Hey, let's go, let's get a big hit here." Blackburn clips the outside corner with a breaking ball. A good curveball, almost a backdoor breaking ball, called a strike. One strike to Pierzynski. That's down the left field line, but it's foul. Ooh. Two strikes. Blackburn has struck out just one batter. That was Ramirez in the third on a check swing. He doesn't need a strikeout here. To some means of getting the Twins off the field with a one run lead. Been able to get 15 ground ball outs. We'll take one more of those. And time call. Oh and two to the Chicago catcher. Popped up right center field. Revere calling for it. And the White Sox failed in the clutch again. Uh, their mark on the American League Central Division. Find out after the final out on Twins Live presented by Century Link featuring the Toyota Post Game Wrap. We'll talk about that as one of our topics. The Twins slowly creeping their way up the charts. Let's see if they can keep it going today. We're going to talk about avoiding the runner on the double play. That is today's instructional with Burt Blylevin and Roy Smalley plus Guardy's post game press conference. What do you think of the ball game? What do you think of Nishioka's defense at shortstop for the first time? You'll find out all that, Dick and Burt. And a lot more. It's a great half hour of baseball after last pitch, isn't it? 
Well, absolutely, but I want to know who's going to be the runner in, in the instructional. We're going to find a production assistant, and we're going to take him out. I think, Dick, you ought to come down. Then, uh, well, I would, but I'm sliding I've, I've, I've got a little bit of a hamstring. Uh, okay. I've, I, no, I've got a pulled oblique is what I've got. <laughs> well, Matt Thornton taking over for uh, Mark Burley, making his 26th relief appearance. Jerzynski wondering where that pitch was. Mark Tian taking over at first. Matt Thornton on the mound. And a 1 0 count to Ben Revere. 1 and 1. Thornton was the closer for the White Sox at the start of the year, but he went 0 and 4 in save opportunities and quickly found himself back in his customary seventh and eighth inning role. Sergio Santos currently is the closer, and he's going to hit the skids a little bit in his last half dozen outings. Jesse Crane got a save over the weekend. One and two. Filed away. He wore number 28 with the Twins. That number is being retired here. And uh, so he's wearing number 26 for the Chicago White Sox. Former twin Jesse Crane. One and two. To Ben Revere. And another foul. Revere, Casilla, and Nishioka trying to tack on a run or two here in the bottom of the eighth. Now, Thornton coming into the ballgame 23 and a third innings. He's allowed only two home runs, 12 walks, two intentional, with 21 strikeouts. And Revere wearing them out. Three two strike fouls off the bat of Ben Revere. Thirty nine thousand four eighty four the paid attendance sellout number nineteen on the season. And now two and two. To left, but at Pierre for an out. Good at bat by Ben Revere. He fell behind quickly, ended up making solid contact for the first out. This July, baseball's biggest stars will gather in Arizona for one spectacular night the 2011 MLB All Star Game. Coverage begins Tuesday, July 12th, live from Phoenix at 7 p.m. Central, only on Fox. Next year, the All Star Game will be in Kansas City. And then uh, I think it would be sometime next year that the word would be official if it comes to that that the 2014 All Star Game will come here. I think they generally work two years out with the All Star. Yeah, game. next year it'll be the first uh, All Star Game in Kansas City since 1973. My first All Star Game. Beautiful ballpark. I'm glad Kansas City's getting another chance to get the All Star Game there. Two strikes to Casillo for two with a walk. One and two. Bouncer left side. And Ramirez throws Casillo out, two down. If you're looking for a great place to get a great Father's Day gift, about Twins apparel and merchandise from the Twins Pro Shop or the Majestic Athletic Clubhouse store at Target Field. Pay a visit this week. Check out the great selection on all the latest Twins apparel. Pro Shops are located in Minnetonka. I think I'm going to stop there after the game today. Apple Valley in Roseville. And it's always fun of course shopping here at Target Field at the Clubhouse store. Yeah, Matt Caps up in the uh, bullpen. Don't know if Nick Blackburn's going to go back out or not. We'll wait and see. But Blackburn, 95 pitches. In eight shutout innings. He's never had a shutout at the major league level. That's going to be tough. And Beckham can't barehand it. Nishioka's aboard with an infield hit. Well, once that got ball got over the head of Matt Thornton at 6 6, you knew it was going to be a tough play. And 
Beckham had only one play and now it's to try to barehand it and then flip it over to Tian over at first, but never got the grip on the baseball. And rather, of his hand. and rather than have Thornton pitch to the dangerous Michael Kadire, the White Sox are going to bring in a right handed reliever. Might be Jesse Crane? Uh, I'm guessing so. So Jesse Crane will pitch to Michael Kadire when we come back. Organization, not only you know in the clubhouse on the field, but off the field also. All of his charities that uh, he helped raise a lot of money and did a lot of good for a lot of people. So the total respect here. Uh, but now that he's in that uniform, we want to knock the living fire out of him. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Talking about Jesse Crane, Jesse Crane, of course, uh, wore a twins uniform. He and his wife Becky did a great job, just like Michael Kadire and his wife Claudia, giving a lot of time back to the community. He made an appearance against the Twins in Chicago, but his first appearance here back in Minnesota, Twins signed him back in 2002, the number two pick out of the University of Houston. Jesse Crane making his 29th relief appearance. Well, here's his good friend Michael Kadire facing him with Nishioka at first and two away. Crane, Twins fans know this already, has a very quick move to first base. Nishioka would love to think about stealing a base. We'll see if he does so. Yeah, very quick feet. Every time Crane does that, I think of Kirk McCaskill with the Angels, a teammate of mine. Very, they just has certain pitchers that once in a while you'll see as a right-hander, just very quick feet in their turn to work first. And a breaking ball over for a strike. Crane last year was such an effective pitcher and had his maybe greatest moment against the White Sox when in a key spot late in the season he struck out Canerco and Manny Ramirez in Chicago. And one of the reasons he had such a solid year last year he developed a kind of a split finger change that he used. Similar to the pitch that Carl Pavano's used so effectively as a starting pitcher. Down and away, backhanded by Pierzynski, one and one. Deeply rooted in this community. He and his wife Becky. Came back this winter for the Diamond Award so Jesse could receive the Carl R. Polat Award for community service. Kadire swings and misses one and two. So many times a player signs with another organization and uh, you only see them when they appear in uniform. But Jesse made it a point of coming back to receive his honor this winter. One and two to Kadire. His home run in the second inning 
The only run of the game so far and they've got him picked off but the throw is wild. Nishioka goes to second. Doesn't know where the ball is and he'll hold up there. I don't think he ever knew where the ball was. He kept looking over his shoulder. I, you, you don't look over your shoulder. You pick up Steve Little over at third base. And you go off of what Steve Little tells you to do. And this ball thrown away. Jesse Crane will be charged with an air. And that ball hitting the, uh, the railing there and then kind of sticking around the railing. Down that right field line. And by the time that Conurco and Quentin got over there. Well, he's at second and he should have been a third. Air charge to Crane on the throw to first. And we'll see if Kadire can bring him in from second base. Two curveballs and a slider so far to Michael Kadire. Fastball high. And Jerry White saying, I don't have my glove on. <laughs> two and two to Kadire. That's to left, hanging in the air for Pierre. And that ends the inning. It'll be a one nothing lead for Matt Capps as he tries to save it for Nick Blackburn. Michael Kadiner's second inning home run. The difference in the game as we head to the ninth inning. Well, Nick Blackburn, eight shutout innings, only one walk, one strikeout, picked up 15 ground ball outs. And Michael Kadiner with a solo home run. Mark Gurley pitched an outstanding ball game, seven innings, allowed the home run. But the ninth inning belongs to Matt Capps, looking for his ninth save of the year, making his 26th relief appearance. And Caps will face Rios, former teammate Adam Dunn, and then Gordon Beckham. Rios 0 for 3, hit the ball hard his first time up, lining out to the glove of Nick Blackburn. Ball one. Well, Matt Gaff's eighth save came in Cleveland against the Cleveland Indians back on June 6th. 1 and 0 to Rios. 2 and 0. Caps in 28 innings pitch, only two walks with 17 strikeouts. 
at the knees two and one Rios struggles on the road have continued here at Target Field. For two last night, over three today. Check swing and a foul, two and two. Watch out, Jerry White. Bouncer left side Nishioka digs it out throws on the run good play one away because we haven't seen him over there we're really not sure what to expect but he's handled things awfully well over there he had a great job of charging that ball right there this copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. I like the way that he rounded that ball right there and set himself up to make a good throw over to Hughes at first. And of course he missed the double play grounder and that was an error but he's shown today I think plenty of arm strength to mm -hmm. make all the plays over there. Dunn just flips one into left field. And he's aboard with a one out single. And that'll bring up Gordon Beckham. Beckham bounced into a double play his last time up. He's hit three ground balls, and now Dunn will be lifted for Brent Lillibridge. So both Canerco and Dunn are out of the game. And the Twins have turned six double plays, six ground ball double plays. In this little two game series so far, there's room for one more here in the ninth. Fouled away. And Beckham, who hit one in last night's ball game, hit one here earlier this afternoon. Probably thinking, I don't want to hit this ball on the ground again. Omar Vizquel's come out onto the on deck circle, barring a double play grounder. He's going to hit for Brent Morell. One strike caps to Beckham. Rivera sitting down and away. Pitch up. Yep. And Beckham swung through it. Yeah, pitch up with something on it. 93. Even though you were trying to get it down and away, you still got to put something on it. And caps good hard fastball. Field playing very deeply, no doubles defense in the outfield. Foul back. And Valencia had a ball in the ninth inning, get between him and the line last night, playing about six feet off the line here. There's the scale. Two strikes to the Chicago second baseman. Fouled away. That fastball clocked at 95. Beckham fouling it off. Caps has left some pitches up in this at bat. See where Rivera sets up if it's not down and away again. Beckham keeping the bat alive. Yeah, that a slider right there, and Beckham reaching over the plate to foul it off. Mm. 
Oh and two again to Gordon Beckham. Came inside to get strike three. Came inside looked like it with a two seamer had a little bit of run in on Beckham. And just kind of tied Beckham up right there really had no chance of hitting that ball just trying to foul her off but instead it's a strikeout. And now Vizquel. One for one as a pinch hitter this year. Agelessly it seems hitting 282 again this year. 44 years old Omar Vizquel's 23rd season at the major league level. Strike on the outside corner. Hit the glove. Point zone gets bigger. Not a level. Popped up, back and out of play. Two strikes. Everybody here, a sellout crowd on their feet. Two strikes to Omar Vizquel. That'll reach the seats. Got him. He came inside to get strike three on Beckham and Viscal. The Twins 4 and 0 against the White Sox this year, and with Michael Kaniyer's home run, a total of 19,000 has been raised. For prostate cancer research, to make a donation, you can call 800 798 Cure or go online to www.pcf.org. Another low scoring, quickly paced game, Anthony LaPanta and the Twins with another one run win over the White Sox. Another brilliant start will break down on Nick Blackburn, took apart the White Sox today. We'll hear from Ron Gardenhire. Look at the debut of Siyoshi Nishioka, all next on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink.